as Gunai Kurnai people, we say our land called Warwick. Our waters we call Yanda. Yeah, is Wachabutchan. These three elements are special to us and they are the spiritual life giving resources and forming the basis of our cultural practices. We have a cultural responsibility to ensure that all of it is looked after. The dirt you are on, known as the Latrobe River, is over 20 million years old. So from around Mount Bobble, the water start running all the way down to the Gippsland Lakes. Every waterway and river courses like the veins in our body. We must take care for it and the creatures within it. It's our life source. The Latrobe River, or the Dirt Yuan, as the Gunai Kurnai people have called it for thousands of years, is one of the longest rivers in eastern Victoria. More than 260 kilometres long, it supports plants and animals of major conservation importance, while also providing an essential source of fresh water, connecting the mountains to the Gippsland Lakes. The Latrobe River's year-round water flow attracted white settlers in the 1840s, with the river supplying water for new homes, water that held tin and gold and wealth, water and feed for livestock. And with that came problems. Farming involves a changing of the landscape. Clearing of the landscape does lead to a, a change in both the, the soil quality, but also the waterways themselves. Putting hard hoofed animals into the landscape can have impact on, on the soils and the conditions of the soils and certainly more historically uh, practices of, of getting the stock to water, so enabling uh, stock to go and, and um, drink from the river itself uh, would impact the, what we call the riparian vegetation. As more settlers arrived, the land along the river was quickly taken. Plans were made to turn natural swamps into new land for farming. So all where we're driving now was all a swamp. This was all basically just scrub that was pretty much hard to penetrate and not viable for agriculture. The draining of the Maui Swamp was the first major intervention along the Latrobe River. It was identified in the late 1800s that the available farming land was starting to run short and after some government lobbying it was decided to drain the Maui Swamp. A short time after the completion of the project, downstream landholders could obviously see differences in flow magnitudes. All of a sudden they could see that they were being impacted by what they called at the time nuisance flooding. One method used back then to prevent flooding was to straighten the waterway by cutting off the river's bends, making the river flow faster. By 1985, this method of control was becoming problematic. Because the Latrobe River had been short and considerably the flow itself had sped up and that had compounded the problem of the erosion along the larger sections of the channel between Terralgan and, and Rosedale. The major tasks to stop erosion were rock beaching and armouring on banks that had slumped away, streamside fencing to stop stock from walking up and down the banks and providing an area for vegetation to grow. One ongoing task is to return the bends in the river to slow it back down, which reduces erosion and provides critical habitat. The government funding model started to shift slightly toward caring for the environment and not just providing measure for agricultural purposes. Industry has also impacted the river. Since colonisation of Europeans in the area, the Latrobe River has been seen as a, a working river. The river itself and the catchment has been modified to provide for agriculture and towns as well as industry. And this industry includes power generation. The power generation process itself um, involves extracting water out of the river and all these modifications have led to about a 25% reduction in water in the Latrobe River. We have three very large open cut coal, brown coal mines in the Latrobe Valley, the deepest of which is nearly 200 metres deep. The Morwell River, which feeds into the Latrobe, has been diverted around one mine and through another mine. So 
the, the, the course of the river, the, the channel of the river and also the local water table is, is directly impacted by the, the mine. There's a big transition now away from brown coal to renewable energy and that's why the, um, the dates for closure for all three mines were brought, were brought forward. 100 years of, of coal mining certainly has uh, an environmental impact on the area. There are some environmental impacts for each of the sites, so uh, clearly on, on flora and fauna, surface water, groundwater and emissions to air. Today, one major problem affecting the flow of the Latrobe is the extraction of its water for industrial and urban use and for agricultural irrigation. New growth forest plantations also soak up water before it has a chance to reach the river. You plant new trees, particularly in a plantation when you've got a whole stand of trees that are a similar age, they soak up that water quite quickly as they're growing rapidly in their early stages of growth. The existence of forests will also be impacting the water table and, and the local climate in that area. To succeed in saving the river, the community needs to come together to support the river's health. Our role specifically is to be that conduit between the community and the government. Our river system is the lifeblood for the whole of Gippsland. It starts at Latrobe Valley and it ends at the ocean. Now, right now, it's anemic. And we've got to make sure that the government listens to the people, they know and understand what its needs are. Rivers are, are used nowadays for an economic use for jobs. They don't see it as a healthy environment for you know, mental health, for recreation, for tourism. We want to make sure that there's equal weight for the environment, for economic and for social justice as well, because that's, that's a healthy, holistic river system. There has been some great work done by a range of agencies, organisations and individuals to improve the health of the Latrobe River system in the last 20 odd years. This is a large river though, and there's a huge legacy of degradation over time. And so there's far more action that needs to be undertaken and rehabilitation really does need to be accelerated. West Gippsland Catchment Management Authority is committed to a better future for the Latrobe River and your support can make a difference. If you would like to be part of helping to make a difference or to find out more, contact us.